The discussion between the importance of hard and soft skills is something that has been around for a while, but up to now there haven't been any changes in our education system, and that's why I'm here to fight for the integration of soft skills in education. But first, what exactly are soft skills, you may ask? Hard skills, as Kiana Nordskog defines them in her article, are those skills which are quantifiable, measurable, technical, or doable, such as the subjects taught in school, math, science, and English. Soft skills, or non-cognitive skills, as David Denham calls them in his article, cannot be quantified numerically through IQ or achievement tests, and as Ada Zing mentions in her TED Talk, refer to your interpersonal effectiveness. As listed in a curriculum created by the U.S. Department of Labor, such skills include communication, networking, enthusiasm, attitude, teamwork, problem solving, critical thinking, and professionalism. All skills that at one point or another one will need in life. For instance, as I'm sure you've all heard before, effectively communicating with members of a group project can prevent one person from doing all the work, and believe it or not, it actually works. Also, effective communication while planning a group trip can prevent a lot of arguments and disagreements from occurring. That's also true. I've been there. But the big question then is, how do you do that? And that's where this becomes a problem. In a document developed by the U.S. Chamber of Commerce Foundation and the Advancements via Individual Determination Nonprofit Organization, also known as AVID, it states, Many employers are finding that recent graduates are unprepared to succeed in the workforce because they lack foundational soft skills such as professional communication, critical thinking, collaboration, and time management. In addition, in Susan Dean's and Julia East's academic journal, it stated that 50% of employers surveyed globally identified workers with a skill gap to be deficient in soft skills. Therefore, soft skills are important and affect one prof one's professional life. Without soft skills, people won't have the skills necessary to succeed professionally, but also personally, because as Bernard Scholz mentions in his journal, a large part of soft skills relates to personal traits and habits, such as creativity, time management, knowing how and when to communicate with specific people, and problem-solving skills. These are all skills we need and go beyond the workforce, but many people don't know how to manage their time efficiently, prioritize, or solve problems for themselves. As stated in the U.S. Chamber of Commerce Foundation article, the importance of these skills is widely acknowledged, yet they are not taught with consistency or given prioritization. The reason for this problem is because soft skills are not taught in school. Education says hard skills are more important than soft skills because if you're skilled enough and have sufficient level of expertise in the area, you'll most likely get the job. However, I say soft skills are as or more important than hard skills because as Zhang argues in her TED talk, Hard skills are what gets your foot in an interview, but the soft skills are what keep you in there. And as Dean and E state in their journal, possession of technical skills alone is no longer sufficient for employees in the highly competitive marketplace of the 21st century because the need for individual soft skills has taken on heightened importance. Therefore, as Don, Bern Don Barnard mentions in his article, a lack of soft skills can limit your potential or even be the downfall of your business. In order to fix this problem and equip people with the soft skills necessary to succeed in life, both professionally and personally, the U.S. Department of Education should mandate the inclusion of soft skills as part of the K-12 curriculum. Many people may argue that soft skills such as organization, creativity, time management, work ethic, conflict resolution, etc. are all skills that are learned through experience and therefore are needed, aren't needed to be taught in schools. However, I say that while that's one method of learning and improving these skills, it doesn't have to be the only one. Ashwell's argues, parents and school teachers have superior influence on, young, on a young person's aptitude and soft skills because these skills can be developed early on and children spend most of their time with parents or educators and in some cases educators. Therefore, if children are already spending most of their time in schools learning hard skills, then why not soft skills too, given the importance they will play in their life? This way, students would graduate with the hard and soft skills needed to succeed and would be prepared for whatever they path, they path they decide to take, whether that's college, workforce, or something else. Obviously, students won't, gra won't graduate as perfect young adults who know exactly what they want in life, but at least they will know and have the skills necessary to achieve their goals and navigate life. My plan is to integrate soft skills as part of the K-12 curriculum, but I know many people will argue against this and say that if soft skills aren't measurable, how will teachers determine whether students have learned these skills and let alone teach them? 
As is recognized in the curriculum developed by the U.S. Department of Labor, soft skills cannot be taught in a vacuum, nor can they be acquired simply because the goal of a lesson plan indicates it shall be so. Rather, they must be introduced, developed, refined, practiced, and reinforced. And I say Schultz has already provided us with a great strategy to do so, and that is embedding the training of soft skills into hard school courses. An approach to this would be to turn the purpose of a lecture upside down, as Schultz argues, and make the content of the lecture be the vehicle to teach soft skills. By integrating soft skills in education, students would be exposed to the skills early on and would be able to develop, refine, practice, and reinforce them all throughout their education. And as the saying goes, practice makes perfect. If the U.S. Department of Education would mandate the integration of soft skills as part of the K-12 curriculum, students would graduate with the hard and soft skills needed to succeed in life. And therefore, we would be increasing the number of individuals qualified to enter the competitive marketplace, especially nowadays that technology is evolving and impacting the workforce. As I've mentioned before, hard skills are no longer enough, nor will they be. Because according to the World Economic Forum, part of the top 10 skills individuals will need to have by 2025 in order to be qualified for the workforce are skills involving problem solving, self-management, and working with others, such as analytical thinking, active learning, creativity, leadership, and social influence, among others, all which, you guessed it, are soft skills. And here I have a picture of all the skills that would be needed, all the top 10 skills that would be needed for 2025. By implementing soft skills in education, we would be doing the future of this world a favor. And whether we like it or not, it's a future not too far from now because we are already being affected by this shift. According to Chloe Baird, she mentions in her document that the top six skills needed post-COVID workforce are flexibility, creativity, communication skills, emotional intelligence, critical thinking, and of course, digital skills. And if I'm not mistaken, a lot of those were soft skills, which once again proves that soft skills are fundamental. For, for far too long, the importance of soft skills has been neglected by the institutions who hold the power to make a change. These skills are important and essential to life. Therefore, the U.S. Department of Education should mandate the integration of soft skills as part of the K-12 curriculum. Thank you.